Minister of State for Petroleum Resources Oil, Heineken Lukoberi, has revealed that Nigeria lost $34 billion in the last two and a half years due to the fall in production from the assets being divested by ExxonMobil to Seplat Energy, a transaction still awaiting approval by the federal government. Lokobiri made the disclosure in Lagos during his keynote speech at the second quarter dinner of the Petroleum Club with the theme, Funding Our Way Out of the Crisis, Looking Up to the Oil and Gas Sector. The minister explained that output from the assets declined from 600,000 barrels per day to current 120,000 barrels per day, leaving a shortfall of 480,000 barrels per day, which he said amounted to $34 billion loss at a conservative $80 per barrel in the last two and a half years. Lokobiri insisted that Nigeria could ramp up oil production to 5 million barrels per day within the next 12 to 18 months. He said lack of required investment in the Nigerian oil and gas industry over the past 10 years contributed to the decline in production and stressed that it was one of the major challenges he faced on assumption of office. Meanwhile, in a move that has been described as unprecedented, the Dangote Petroleum Refinery yesterday announced a further reduction of the price of diesel from 1,200 naira to 1,000 naira per litre. Members of the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria had a few weeks ago said that local oil marketers set the price at 1,225 naira per litre for diesel after securing a bulk purchase agreement prior to adding their markup. It came after a group executive at Dangote, Deva Kuma Edwin, confirmed that the company has begun distributing diesel and jet fuel to the local market. In a note from the company, it stated that before now, it had reduced price from the market rate of 1,600 naira to 1,200 naira, about 30% crash, but that even that price has been further reduced. The Dangote refinery added that the latest development is expected to significantly impact the overall economy, which depends partly on diesel to power businesses. All right. A sandwich of issues mm -hmm. in the energy sector, Rufai. First, the Minister of State for Oil, um, for Petroleum Resources, Oil, Heineken, we were talking about how much money we've lost in two years. And then, of course, good news coming from the Dangote refinery, news we've been looking forward to with regards to it coming on stream. Your take on these stories. So, uh, first, uh, Heineken, Lukobiri, has just pretty much highlighted what is the real, one of the real problems with Nigeria. If you check in the oil and gas sector in the last 10 years, we've not really had major investments. And it's that sector that brings in most of the revenue as regards Forex, apart from sales and you know, product sharing contracts and things like that. It is also the investment in the sectors that open up opportunity for jobs for people. And I keep saying, if my memory serves right, maybe after the Agina project, not too many projects like that has gone on in the oil and gas sector. So you don't have this inflow of Forex. Also, because regulations are very difficult and it's a very tough cookie doing business. I mean, take a look at the Sepla Mobile deal and look at how the back and forth on that deal has gone for a while. Since the initial agreement was we've not been able to make clearance on that deal. And you can see the setback we're having. And it's not only that deal. There are many other deals that is stalling also, people that are buying some of this field to run the field is problematic because of money. We've also had spills. We've also had the aging fields. I'm sure you saw the Christmas tree that went kaput the other day, that they had to fight to close up again. So because of that, most of the oil majors are going to countries like Namibia. And you'll be surprised. Ghana. Look at what Tulu was doing in Ghana. Those smaller players, Namibia and the likes. They are prospecting, even Senegal, they are prospecting there. Because the bottlenecks, the bureaucratic bottleneck is not as difficult as ours. The encumbrance of corruption is not as difficult as ours. And there's a structured way to which they do things. And that's why it says we are suffering. I mean, look at the deal. Somebody will have thought that the deal will have gone through all the regulatory uh, hurdles now. And by now, we should have been, SEPLA should have been ramping up production again. But we're having a shortfall. So about $34 billion has been left on the table. And that's where our oil sector is today. 
And that's why vis-a-vis, -vis, when you look at it now, production has so plummeted so much that in March, we are doing 1.2 million barrels. And that's a ticking time bomb because on the flip side, we are using most of our reserves to defend. We are not getting the fundamentals of production right. We are not making enough revenue from production, which is our mainstay, which is for the last over 30 years, I've always been our mainstay about 30 years ago, Crude oil was bringing about over 60 percent to our budget, uh, our foreign, uh, foreign forex to our budget, and now we are defending heavily, which years to stabilize the madness in the forex market. But now we are not producing. So where are we going to get the revenue from? And look at it vis-a-vis -vis the budget targets. So I think Eddie Lukwobiri has spoken well. He has just shown us the problem to our face. What are we going to do to be able to revamp them? What are we going to do to be able to clear the regulatory bottlenecks? Vis-a-vis -vis the other problems, the other day, I was asking a question as regards the Portacot refinery. We are nowhere to be found. They said it's going to start work in two weeks. Technically, Te technically the mechanical, in fact, they've speak, spoken on the English in the paper. Is it Pabosha or something? Pabolo Jassi? And you can see where we are now. I think the only ray of hope is now Dangote. But we can't wait for Dangote to be able to inject his own price of 1,000 naira for diesel so that at least he can permeate to the market and marketers can lap this up. But if you go to the filling station, I've not seen, it's just an announcement. Hopefully when he now permeates to the market, they take the orders, then we can have. But we need to revamp our oil sector. Since it's still the major foreign forex enter for us, we need to do more in the oil sector because that's how we can truly get dollar to be able to stop all of these forex encumbrances we are having. All right. Well, I think, uh, you know, ministers of the uh, Federal Republic <clears throat> who are working for, you know, the president and for the rest of us, you resist the temptation to be make, to make, making a political statement. What Senator Lokubiri has said, you know, he has just raised more questions than answers. And when he says Nigeria will produce 5 million barrels, uh, you know, uh, per day, uh, within uh, uh, 5 million barrels within about uh, 8 to 12 months, now do we have the infrastructure? It's one thing to say, oh, we'll produce 5 million barrels. Where are we going to get the oil rigs from which, you know, that production will take place? So, I mean, that's why I say, you know, our ministers should be cautious. The kind of statements they make, this should be statements that can possibly be backed up by hard facts, by, you know, possibilities. So that's one number one question that, uh, you know, the Minister of State for Petroleum needs to address. Second, he says uh, because of the separate uh, ExxonMobil deal that has not been, uh, you know, uh, fully concluded. You recall that ExxonMobil decided to leave, uh, you know, Nigeria, sell its shares in the joint operating uh, agreement to Seplat. Now, at that point, uh, NMPCL said it has the right of first refusal. Now, that, you know, resulted in a lot of uh, back and forth. The matter went all the way to the president. There was intervention uh, by the upstream regulatory agency led by uh, Mr. Gwinga Komalafe. Now, they've been on that matter since about nine months ago now. So what is delaying the completion of that deal? And why are those assets, you know, lying fallow? Now, he says the assets uh, from uh, ExxonMobil can produce up to 600,000, whereas, you know, they are producing just 120,000. The question is, why is ExxonMobil not able to produce up to 600,000? ExxonMobil has capacity. The biggest uh, oil company from the U.S., about the third in the world. Are there issues that ExxonMobil is facing? What is the minister doing to address that? That's another question. Because even if uh, Sepla takes over, you know, those uh, assets, asset, Sepla is not possibly as resourced as ExxonMobil. And why is ExxonMobil leaving Nigeria? That's part of the issue. They are operating in Guyana. So why are the uh, various multinationals, why are they withdrawing from Nigeria? So these are the issues that I think that the uh, you know, Ministry of Petroleum should look into so that we can encourage investment. And then it says, uh, you know, uh, 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 five million barrels of uh, production. Okay, what is happening to the refineries? I thought they said the Port Harcourt refinery has been mechanically completed. So 
those are also questions that uh, Senator Lukubiri, you know, we need to address. And I think beyond all of this, you know, the uh, NMPCL, the uh, Ministry of Petroleum, the upstream regulatory agency, they have to sit down with CEPLAT and try to resolve what the uh, issue is with those uh, assets. If uh, NMPC is going to be given more, more shares, let them decide, decide that. You know, so, and it's an issue that I think the president must personally look into, since the president himself is the uh, Ministry of uh, Petroleum. So the minister should be careful, saying, oh, five million barrels, just giving people hope, you know, based on uh, nothing. If we say we are losing uh, $34 billion, that's something uh, to cry about. Why are they not supporting ExxonMobil? Why the uh, transaction uh, is yet to be completed? To make sure that ExxonMobil can produce more than uh, 120,000 uh, barrels uh, per day. As for the uh, Dangote refinery, well, um, crude oil, I, I said the crude oil, um, diesel at 1,000 naira. I've not seen anybody you know, who has bought at uh, 1,000 naira. Two weeks ago, the uh, marketers said, Okay, they were going to sell at 1,225, but now they are talking uh, 1,000 naira. Well, it may well be a sweetener to encourage, you know, um, the market, but the market in the long run is going to uh, adjust. And while it is a good thing to celebrate the emergence of uh, the Dangote refinery in full operation, well, almost, you know, with ships uh, waiting to load with. Uh, you know, the market being uh, given supply. The thing is, well, as I said, the market will adjust when uh, the refineries, the other refineries begin to work. And Dangote refinery is able to do this, maybe because of the uh, Naira, the exchange rate that has appreciated. If the exchange rate plummets again, then of course, you know, uh, the, the cost will go up. And uh, the Dangote refinery, has a capacity to do about 650,000 you know, uh, barrels per day. Do we even have the industrial capacity to absorb you know, the diesel that, is being, uh, that the Dangote refinery will be producing? The, that refinery will probably end up you know, selling most of its products overseas. You need industrialization. Without real industrialization, you, know, you will just find that uh, the international mar market may be more attractive for, for the Dangote refinery. These are the issues in my view. All right, well, 1,000 seems to be the magic number this week in terms of good news in, in sectors where there have been alarms that have been raised. First of all, earlier this week, we talked about the fact that the dollar or the Naira to the dollar was at 1,000 Naira and that was celebrated and looking forward to bringing that, that down even a bit further. And now the celebration is around uh, Dangote being able to sell diesel at 1,000 Naira. And as already been mentioned, and we say it often, the taste of the pudding is in the eating. So until we see it play out in terms of being able to go to the stores to purchase, um, go to the filling station to purchase, then we will truly be able to celebrate and say this has come to stay. But beyond that is um, the impact it would have. We know how the increase in the prices of diesel, the price of diesel has affected a number of things. Number one, um, cost of running businesses. Unfortunately, we haven't still been able to address the power issues that we have in the country. And so a lot of small businesses still rely on powering their are, um, they are organizations, factories using generators, and this uses diesel in many, in many instances. So the impact on that, and hopefully that will then bring down prices of goods. We got news about the food inflation going down. We looked at the prices of diesel coming down. So all, in the, all indices point to the fact that we should be experiencing a show of a reduction of prices in the markets as a result of this positive news. If the Naira is stronger, diesel prices go, has gone down according to the news reported by an executive from Dangote, that Dangote is going to be selling at 1,000 um, naira um, per, per liter, then we should be seeing that trickle down to the price of good, um, the, um, seeing a food inflation coming down to a reasonable level at least. So if those things do not happen, then it means that these are just headlines that, are, that we, we, we keep talking about, but it's not trickling down to real um, prices that people are making the lives of Nigerians a bit better. So until we are able to measure that, then we are able to truly celebrate this 
this milestone indeed as has been described by some people it's unprecedented it's great it revives the market we see the benefits of what we have been celebrating in terms of a local refinery and the opportunity to reduce Nigeria's dependence on, on imported fuel that would be really excellent so I'm hoping that in the next few days we'll begin to see that uh, we'll see, begin to see people able to go and buy diesel for 1,000 naira per liter. But beyond that, uh, moving on um, to the Seplat ExxonMobil deal. If you recall, in 2021, Seplat had made a move to, I'm um, saying, discussing with mobile producing here in Nigeria to purchase and to um, to buy shares. But unfortunately, as we mentioned, there had been legal um, um, gridlock especially from the NNPC side of things who own 60% of shares and um, Seplat and uh, Mobile, and they've not been able to come to an agreement. So this, well, maybe alarm raised by Senator Heineken Lokobiri, just to point the attention to the fact that when we have bottlenecks like this, or when we have um, um, a, a legal stalwart, then it pre presents an opportunity for us to lose money, especially at a time when the nation is desperate to get so much needed for, for you know foreign um, dollars so if well, we've lost 34 billion dollars in two years and bear in mind he's just used 80 dollar um, per liter as a benchmark even though in some instances it could be potentially more then we should be having serious conversations as to what is truly the um, legal impasse what can be done what interventions need to be made he said in in trying to absolve himself of responsibility of this being the minister of state for oil that the first task he did when he came into office was to have a sit down meeting with both parties to see how they can work things out make things work so that production can come back you know can can um, can come again to 600,000 barrels per day, but unfortunately, this hasn't happened. The big question is, would Seplat be able to come into and, and fully purchase the assets of Mobile here in Nigeria? Would they be able to meet up with the 600,000 barrels per day? And would they be able to contribute to the, um, you know, to the, um, to the quantity of barrels per day that Nigeria currently is able to produce? Beyond that, of course, would then make us look at the different challenges that the oil sector faces. The uh, minister has said a number of things, and unfortunately, this is why there's a trust deficit when it comes to um, you know, appointees or ministers or leaders, when they make statements that are very bogus without anything to back it up. He said within 12 to 18 months, we can make 5 million barrels per day. We've been trying to meet up to our OPEC quota in, in so many years, and we've not been able to do it. It would, it would be really great if his assertions are right, but he's pegged it on a number of things to come into play. He's talked about investment in the sector, he's talked about you know, infrastructure, but even the little things that the onus on the government is supposed to do, not the little things, but the things, the responsibility hasn't been met. Our local refineries, what's happening with the deadline set for not just the Potako refinery? Recall that they said all the refineries in staggered measures would come to play. So we have the Kaduna refinery, the Wari refinery, what's happening with that? So it's not just enough to talk and, you know, make news and promises so that people don't even pay attention to it anymore. But realistic, um, you know, realistic projections backed up with figures, facts, that um, how you're going to achieve that, how this will happen, how you're looking to attract um, investment. The president has been traveling and talking about the fact that he's been going around speaking to potential investments in the oil sector and other sectors. And, you know, so it doesn't really speak well in that way. What we want to see are results. If there are results, it will speak for itself without the minister even coming out to say that, oh, we could potentially do this or that, you know, in the future. Well, move on to other news making rounds this morning. President Bola Tinubu has inaugurated a steering committee for the single window project to the disclosure that the implementation of the initiative would generate about $2.7 billion revenue to the nation's purse. As the National Executive Committee of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, meets tomorrow in Abuja, the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Nyasun Wike, is alleged to be pulling all the stops to help National Chairman of the Party, Umar Damagum, retain his office. On the foreign scene, torrential rains across the United Arab Emirates prompted flight cancellations, forced schools to shut and brought traffic to a standstill. The heavy rains that caused widespread flooding across the desert nation stemmed partly from cloud seeding. Singapore's non-oil domestic exports plunged 20.7% in March from a year ago, a sharp decline from the revised 0.2% fall in February. This is the largest drop in non-oil domestic exports recorded by Singapore since January 2023.